Good morning and welcome to this service on Easter 7 here at St Mary's in Sanderstead. We're going to begin our time of worship together with our first hymn, Light's Abode, Celestial Saint. in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so as we come afresh into the Lord's presence today, we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. So let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. 
Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we say together the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And so let us pray the collect for this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We have our reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Today's psalm is Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful, let them exult before God, let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds, his name is the Lord, be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, 
When you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked. The heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. A reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear the words of our gospel reading, we're going to have another piece sung by St Mary's choir, Jesus, lover of my soul.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave to me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know that in truth I came from you. And they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All are mine, and mine is yours, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. It was the evening of the last night of Jesus' life, and he prays for us his followers in every age, that we might be united in a hostile world. In these last three months, we have all experienced just how easily we can be brought to our knees. Had you been born in 1900, you have, would have been 14 when the Great War began. And by the time you were 18, 22 million people had died as a result of hostility. Following that war until you reach 20, the Spanish flu epidemic kills another 50 million people around the globe. When you are 29, the Great Depression begins and unemployment reaches 25%. By the time you are 33, the world's economy has almost collapsed. On your 39th birthday, the Second World War begins and by the time you are 45, 75 million people have perished, 6 million of them Jewish. At 52, the news of the Korean War reveals that yet another 5 million people have died as a result of conflict. But it isn't finished. When you hit 64, the Vietnam War has started, and by the time it is finished, when you are 75, another 4 million people have died. By the time you yourself have died, there have been more than 56 wars with the loss of life at over 140 million souls. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things will happen, but the end is still to come. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. It was VE Day, as I stood at the grave of a lady whose anniversary of death falls around this time, a woman who was born just after 1900. A companion is standing beside me, herself having survived the Holocaust. As I ponder on what it was these two women witnessed and lived through, along with so many others, I asked myself, how do we survive in a world of such hatred? And there was the answer right before me. Love shared between friends. It is almost impossible to understand the motivation behind, one, behind why some people choose to act, 
live and perpetrate such evil. And yet in contrast to all of this sits today's reading, that we are not alone. That this world, along with its death, sadness, fear and brutality, has been conquered by and through the love of one human being who was in all his being the fullness of God. And that that same love is in us, if only we will live in the good and truth of it. Isn't that what we all need to hear today, tomorrow and the next day? That when we turn on the news and we see yet another war has begun, when we put on our masks to do our shopping, when we are sad because we can't hug our grandchildren, when we discover that one of our neighbours has been through an operation only then to get COVID-19 and end up in intensive care. Life in the 21st century is hard. Yes, we have more comforts than ever before, but we are also facing some of the greatest threats. Disease, climate change, war, economic trauma. What tomorrow will be like, I do not know but things will certainly not be as they have been. Not everything in the Bible is specifically directed to us. God, as far as I know, hasn't asked any of us to build an ark. He hasn't asked us to march around the walls of Jericho or to build him a temple. Although these events, we certainly gain truth about personal arks, walls and temples. But when it comes to today's reading, we can have total and utter confidence that the words of Jesus offered that night in the upper room 2,000 years ago weren't just for the disciples then. They are for us now, right in the situation that we find ourselves in. Jesus said, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And so today, those words are for you, Arthur. They are for you, Ilsa. They are for Pookie, for the children of Crone Club, for the Clark family, for Alison Brewster, and for the parishes of St. Mary's and St. James, and for all of you who are worshipping with us this morning. Jesus has prayed directly and explicitly for you. And so when the headlines are terrifying, and when we sit behind our closed doors fearful of what might be on the other side, we can, against all odds, hold on to our peace and know in our heart of hearts that whatever happens, God has got our backs. Judas has left the upper room to do his worst. And it is then that Jesus seeks to reassure the other eleven, I am not going to abandon you. What was going to happen to Jesus the next day was one of, if not, the most brutal act of hatred that I can imagine. It's a wonder he lived as long as he did. But knowing what's coming, Jesus says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. We might say that a sunset, a tree, or a painting is glorious, but that is not real glory. In Exodus, we read that the glory of God covered Sinai for 40 days, that the sight of it was like a raging, consuming, devouring fire in the eyes of the children of Israel. It is the glory that Moses asked God to see. Please, he said, show me your glory. But God told him he would die. And so hiding Moses in the cleft of the rock, God allowed him to see him as he passed by. But then something changed. When Jesus was transfigured between, before Peter, James and John, we read his face shined like the sun. And John writing of this event later said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. As Jesus prays for us, at the very heart of his prayer is that we will know love because that is the act that reveals real glory. The only way that we can revel in the glory of Jesus is by showing love for one another. And because of that love, the world and all its malice, hatred, disunity and conflict is overcome and dissolved. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, Jesus said, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, 
but these are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given to me, that they may be one as we are one. I read a story about a rabbi who was having trouble with his congregation. They just couldn't agree on anything. The president of the congregation said, Rabbi, this simply cannot continue. There has to be a conference and we will settle all areas of dispute once and for all. The appointed time, the rabbi, the president and ten elders met around a magnificent mahogany table in the conference room of the synagogue. One by one the issues were dealt with and on each issue it became more and more apparent that the rabbi was a lonely voice in the wilderness. The president of the synagogue said, come rabbi, enough is enough. Let's vote and allow the majority to rule. He passed out slips of paper and each made his mark. The votes were collected and the president said, you may examine them, Rabbi. It is 11 to 1 against you. We have the majority. Deeply offended, the rabbi rose to his feet and said, so now you think because you have voted that you are right and I'm wrong. Well, that's not so. And raising his arms impressively while looking heavenward, he called upon the Holy One of Israel to give a sign that he was right and they were wrong. No sooner were the words out of his mouth, but there was a deafening clap of thunder, a brilliant flash of lightning that struck the mahogany table and cracked it in two. The room was filled with smoke and fumes, and the president and the elders were hurled to the floor. Surrounded by rubble, rubble the rabbi stood untouched, his eyes and smile flashing with triumph. Slowly, the president lifted himself out of the rubble, his hair singed, his glasses hanging from one ear and his clothes in disarray. Finally, he said, all right, it is 11 to 2, but we still have the majority. The church has throughout history been fractured and fragmented. It has argued and it has discussed. It has fallen out and then fallen back in again. It has killed, it has tortured, and at times has reflected anything but the glory of God. And so has the prayer of Jesus been unanswered for these two centuries? Can Christians really, despite all of our difference and disagreements, be one? Are we really able to live so that Jesus is glorified in us for all the world to see? Most of the world's aggression is the result of others wanting to gain something over another. But Jesus reveals that divinity is only ever at work in the act of giving up all efforts to gain. It is selfless sacrifice. Jesus reveals God as he who is willing to die that others may live. For God isn't glorified in actions carried out by people seeking self-glorification, self-gratitude, or by people taking something from another. We cannot be bystanders in the kingdom of God. We have to be active participants who endeavour to live the crucified pattern of life that the Lord himself lived. For this is how God's glory can show up anywhere, be it in economic depression, hatred, terrorism, even global viral threats. Love has to start with us. We cannot wait for anyone else to make the first move. I often speak of Max Lucado in my morning prayer services. And he told a story that said one day his wife brought home a monkey. His daughters were thrilled, but he was not. He had all kinds of questions. Where was the monkey going to eat? His wife said that he's going to sit at the table and eat with them just like the rest of the family. Then he asked her, where is it going to sleep? She told him, it is going to sleep in their bed. Then he asked, but what about the smell? And she said, the monkey will get used to it. I did. Max went on to say, before you comment on the odour of someone else, check your own odour first. Living in the glory of God is to live putting others before ourselves, loving them when there is no reason to love except that we are told to do it. At a fair, spectators gathered for an old-fashioned horse pull. The grand champion horse pulled a sledge 
with £4,500 on it. The runner-up was close at 4400 But some wondered what they could pull if they paired together. Separately, they had pulled almost £9,000, but when working together as a team, the winning horses pulled more than 12000 almost three times what either of them could pull on their own. Jesus is now glorified beyond our imagination, seated at the right hand of the Father, praying for you and praying for me. And one day each one of us will behold that glory, not in the cleft of a rock, not only a few of us on the mountain of transfiguration, but his whole unified bride. In the meantime, the prayer of Jesus, that he is glorified in us, is being worked out day by day, answered when we are united in faith and in love, when our lives are knit together, just like the two friends I spoke of at the beginning. Shortly after the end of the Civil War, in a fashionable Richmond church, members of the congregation were invited to come to the altar to receive the Holy Communion. After several rows of worshippers who received side by side sat down, a black man walked down the aisle, and no one else got up to receive the bread and wine, although many had not yet received communion. Just then, another man stood up, strode down the aisle, and sat beside the black man. Together they knelt, the man showing no distinction. It was General Robert E. Lee. Lee's example is an example for us all, that no matter what the world says, we are the body of Christ, and we have to work together, breaking down every single thing that divides us, be it racial, cultural, or denomination. We are called to let go of the past, to let go of hurts that separate us one from another, turning them over to God and offering those who have hurt us forgiveness. We are called to demonstrate our unity in Christ through love, revealing his glory in us. Glory which is like a raging, consuming, devouring fire in the eyes of the children of Israel. Amen. And so we say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Today's response to let the righteous be glad is sing praises to the Lord. Let the righteous be glad, sing praises to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you share your life with our life. Unite your church in this vitality 
that it may witness to your truth. Keep hold of your church and treasure those whom you call by name. We pray especially today, Lord, for the churches of St. Mary's and St. James, for our bishops Christopher and Jonathan, Let the righteous be glad. Sing praises to the Lord. Heavenly Father, your Son expanded the narrow vision of his disciples. Enlarge the scope of our concern to embrace people of all nations and races. Keep us ever watchful against all that would devour the weak and the vulnerable. Let the righteous be glad. Sing praises to the Lord. Heavenly Father, give us grace to share your love with each other. Bless our families and our friends and those closest to us, as well as those unknown strangers whom to know would enrich us. Enfold all people within your loving arms. We pray especially today, Lord, for the Brewer family, for Charlotte and Lindsay, for Sue and Richard Rag, for Rachel Woods and Aileen Solly. Let the righteous be glad. Sing praises to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the cry of all who cast their anxiety on your loving care. Restore them and us and strengthen all in your service. Heavenly Father, your glory unites heaven and earth. Gather to yourself the faithful departed. Grant eternal life to all your children in your possession. And on this day we remember Finn, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. May she and all your saints rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory forever, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Our thanks to Jane and Charlotte Kennedy from St. James, our sister church, for singing that beautiful anthem. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is Christian, Dust Thou See.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. He is not here, he is risen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.